quickly and at least most definitely the last 20 years. Ideas and policy has originated in the smoky back rooms of DC. Um, it's originated from people, often special interests, often politicians who just want to get reelected. And those ideas are tired. They're tired ideas. And they're ideas of people who are self-interested. What we don't need is somebody telling us that they're going to continue to spend more money and indebt our children and our grandchildren. To obey their dictates. And now they do everything. They're involved in every aspect of daily lives. Because they no longer represented us. Because they no longer represented what we believe. And why? And why? It's because, because they're listening to the same people who have offered the same ideas for generations. They don't care about your children's health or the health of your grandparents. They care about two things. Money and power. What had happened was, back in May of 1773, Parliament had come to a, an agreement with the wealthy merchant class in England. The wealthy merchants had agreed to continue to pay high taxes if Parliament would protect them from all kinds of competition. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar like the Federal Reserve System? Is it moral and right for one person to forcibly use another person for his or her own economic benefit? You see, if we say yes, it is right for one person to forcibly use another person for his or her own economic benefit. We have just justified slavery. No, it is not right. It is immoral. Freedom is the issue. The moment that private property is not considered as sacred as the laws of God, tyranny commences. That's exactly where we are today. Tyranny has already commenced. And you've got to remember the Declaration of Independence. That is the cornerstone on which this nation was built. Second sentence in that declaration is the single most radical statement in Western political history. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that all of us are directly endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. This is the law form where God is number one, we the people are number two, and government is number three. What the government has done in large measure by the means of the 14th Amendment, they've created a new class of citizenship that is subject to government. But the Congress of the United States of America declared in the revised statutes, 1873 and 1875, that the organic law of the United States of America consists of Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, Northwest Territorial Ordinance, and Constitution of the United States. The Declaration is as much the law today as is the Constitution. The genius of the Constitution was that it restrained government. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution spells out all legislative powers that have been bequeathed to the federal government. 20 specified powers that are given to the legislative branch of the federal government. Only 20! In Federalist number 45, he said that the powers given to the federal government are few and defined. Alexander Hamilton agreed, he said in Federalist number 32, he says that the states will enjoy the rights of sovereignty which they before had unless it is specifically and word for word given to the federal government. Hey, there's a fourth branch of government and that's what it's called. It's called trial by jury. Your role is to look at that law, see if it's a just law, and then rule if the guy broke that law. But when you turn your back on your duty, the things you need to do, then what happens is you slowly lose your freedom. And that character is what our forefathers were made of. That character is starting to come out now more and more every day with people like you standing up to fight for our rights. Which what we're engaged in is the most American thing that we can do. Let's go back to America. The American principles. It says that to secure these rights, 
Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. The first half of that sentence indicates the prime directive, the purpose of government as envisioned by the founders, and that was to secure your God-given unalienable rights. You have abandoned your sovereignty. You have forgotten that you are endowed by your creator with certain unalienable rights. And until you restore that memory, you are going to have trouble and trouble and trouble. But if you can get hold of your God-given unalienable rights, you can take this country back.